Hello and welcome everyone to uh, another tea stream. This time uh, we've got a bit of a shiny forehead situation going on. I'm trying a bit of different lighting. Hopefully this will be a bit more enjoyable for you all. Uh, today we are comparing two very similar teas. On the one hand, we've got the 2018 KXQM from Crimson Lotus Tea. Uh, KXQM stands for Kunlu Shan Xiao Chaomu, so like small uh, arbor leaves. I got this one. This is a tea I enjoy a lot. I've had it for about a year now in my own storage, and it's uh, been consistently just a really nice tea. We'll be taking this as a baseline, and we'll compare it to one of the teas I bought this uh, November for my big 11.11 uh, tea purchase, which is uh, another Kunlu Chaomu, this time however from a producer called Jing Xian Tang. So on the one hand we've got Crimson Lotus 2018, and on the other we've got uh, a producer that was unknown up until now, 2019, also Kunlu Chaomu. I've already preheated my pot, so I will start with the 2018 Kunlu from Crimson Lotus. Uh, I'm also going to put on some music, hang on. There we go, I almost forgot about that. As usual, I'm doing 8 grams in my Hongni pot. Uh, for those of you that have been here before, this is probably not any kind of news to you. Okay. Well, I'm just putting this away. So, here's what it looks like in the pot. It's kind of crazy how bright this pot looks now that I'm using lighting. Really a huge difference. But yeah, uh, I'm gonna mute myself for a bit to reboil the water and do the uh, rinse and the first steep. So I'll be back in a moment. Um, the music I use in my streams is just like Vaporwave I come across on Bandcamp. A lot of Vaporwave doesn't have uh, like full rights reserved, but it's fine for use in uh, unmonetized videos, which is all of what I do, so that comes in quite handy.
All right, first steep uh, just went in. I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I definitely enjoy the Crimson Lotus KXQM quite a lot, and the one session I've had of the new Kunluti has also been really nice, so this should be a good comparison and some good tea overall. First steep should be about ready now. Yeah, it's got a really nice golden yellow color. Not much of a smell, but there is like some grains. It does have kind of a sweet smell. Hmm. And something else I can't exactly put my finger on. Like, the first thought I had was these, uh, like, candied pomelo peels that uh, a friend of mine brought over from Thailand once that I got to try, but that is very uh, oddly specific. Let's smell the leaves too. Maybe those are a bit uh, different. Hmm, okay. A lot fruitier than uh, the liquid. Still that kind of grainy smell though. Mm. And it, it, it's definitely also got a bit of citrus going on, so that there is like a slight citrus vibe to this tea, sure. Also, maybe a bit of spice. But yeah, enough smelling for now. Let's uh, drink some tea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is still very much uh, how I remember this tea, so... It does have some amount of bitterness, but it's not overwhelming or anything, it's just noticeable. And uh, again with the pomelo, yeah, uh, we've got a bit of a like grapefruit peel type bitterness going on here. Fairly similar to what you'd usually find in a tea from the Bulang area. Other than that, mm, hey Broto. So uh, the first tea I'm doing is the 2018 Crimson Lotus KXQM. Hmm. Maybe. A very slight minerality to it, mostly towards the end, like right before the aftertaste. Um, what else do we have? There's definitely some sweetness there, but it's really hard to identify like what exactly it is. It does seem kind of like a clean sweetness, where you get just a sweet flavor without it specifically being like a certain type of fruit or a certain flower or something like that. Uh, 
And there's definitely that, like, kind of herbaceous, kind of spicy note going on. I'd definitely say the defining characteristic of this particular tea, though, is that, like, citrus peel type bitterness. Even if it's not particularly strong, I'd say it has, like, the greatest overall effect on the kind of flavour impression I get from this. Mm. Definitely quite pleasant overall. Uh, it's not the most viscous tea so far. It's like medium viscosity maybe. Definitely not a like standout characteristic of this tea or anything. It is quite pleasant to drink though. Like, I wouldn't necessarily call it smooth in the way a more aged tea would be, but uh, it goes down well and I quite enjoy drinking it. Okay. So yeah, that was the first steep. Uh, I'm gonna mute myself again for a moment to uh, reboil the water. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I am back, uh, the second steep is going in. I'm curious to see how this tea develops, whether it's just gonna stay like fairly constant, or if uh, the flavor composition changes a bit as we get deeper and deeper into it. So, have any of you viewers uh, tried this Crimson Lotus KXQM before? I know that you sold some of it to Lemir, if I recall correctly, Broto. Yeah, I do think it's a really good tea for the price at the time. And yeah, I'm expecting this to get a bit thicker once we uh, get to the later steeps. Because it, it usually is more viscous than what I got on this first steep. This one's looking a bit uh, better already in that regard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stronger bitterness now. This is definitely a just stronger steep overall. More minerality as well. Maybe even a like light touch of astringency. Mm. 
Hmm. Yeah, everything about it is just more intense on the steep, which, in my personal opinion, is a really good thing. I uh, don't tend to go for those like super light, super subtleties. I like it when something like punches me in the face with flavor. And aroma, of course. Mm. Yeah, definitely more viscosity on this one. It's also coating the mouth really nicely right now. Maybe like the only thing to note about this one is that it's not particularly sweet overall. There is a certain sweetness like I mentioned, but uh, it's by no means as sweet as some of the other teas I have. Depending on your personal preference, uh, that may, of course, either be a good thing or a bad thing. Personally, I'm quite fine with it. Um, I do think this tea has a lot of flavors that like, would be able to balance out a higher amount of sweetness. So, I find it a bit unfortunate that there isn't too much of that. Um, what else can I say about this tea? Oh yeah, so this tea has a 2019 version on Crimson Lotus as well. Unfortunately, the price has gone up by a fair amount though, so uh, 2019 was a bit of a difficult year for tea overall because uh, there were a lot of droughts in like all over Yunnan Which means that uh, whatever tea they did manage to harvest and process is uh, going to be a bit more expensive overall At the same time, however, this might also mean that 2019 uh, could be a year for just really good tea overall. Because the leaves that did survive all the harvesting and processing and the droughts and whatnot uh, might just be more potent overall. So, since my last stream, uh, I did a bit of upgrading, on top of adding the light boxes, uh, I also changed a few audio settings, uh, so like, sound-wise, is everything fine for you all? Does everything look fine? That is good to hear. On that note, I'm gonna mute myself for a moment because I need to reboil my water again, so I'll be with you in a minute.
Okay, I'm back. Uh, hi, Adam, by the way. I uh, unfortunately didn't see your earlier message, so sorry for that. How are you doing? Uh, this KXQM was $50 for 200 grams when I bought it, and I think I bought it on sale, so maybe like $45 for a 200 gram thing. Unfortunately, it's sold out by now, so uh, you can only get the 2019 version from Crimson Lotus, which is a bit more expensive. Let me go check. Uh, 2019 Spring KXQM is a 100 gram Bing for $40, so uh, the new one is unfortunately quite a lot more expensive. It's 40 cents a gram compared to 25 cents a gram. This other tea I bought was a bit cheaper in comparison. It was a 330 yuan for... Uh, for 200 grams, which comes out to a little over 40 euros for 200 grams, so maybe like $45 for 200 grams, but not just when it's on sale. That's its price all the time. Not a big difference, but uh, definitely a big one compared to the 2019 AXQM. One has a really nice color. Look at this. Uh, this is just modern Hongni. I do have to note, the colors you're seeing probably aren't like 100% lifelike because uh, I had to like try around with adjusting the white balance so stuff would be visible at all. Uh, I'd say things are a bit less red in person, so uh, if you've seen any of my other stream vi uh, videos, I have that same pot on there and it's... Looks a bit browner than this. This one looks like really red right now because of the white balance. And it's kind of similar with the uh, tea liquor. While this one looks like really intensely orange, it's a bit more yellow in person. Like, it's, it's kind of difficult to balance because uh, the light boxes I'm using have some really cold light. So, uh, in order to balance that out, I need, like, a decent amount of red in my white balance. And that leads to some other colors uh, looking a bit redder, redder than they really are. To answer your question though, this pot is a modern Hongni pot that I got from uh, Jay at Tea Life Hong Kong.
It is kind of funny though, isn't it? Like, this almost looks like a uh, Juni pot or something that had, like, some dyes added to the clay to make it look this red, but in reality it's just uh, lighting. <laughs> Okay, uh, time for steep number four. I will mute myself again for a bit to reboil the water. So I will be right back. Alright, uh, fourth steep is going in, I've still got this to drink, let's see if there's uh, some more things I can say about this tea. Still really nice. Something I think I noted in one of my earlier tea streams is that the uh, bottom part of the Gongdao Bay always tastes a bit sweeter than the top part and I have no idea why that might be but uh, it's been a fairly consistent observation for me like it's true for almost any tea I make this way This is just good stuff, really, really solid. I wish it weren't sold out so uh, more people could experience it. But one of the reasons why I initially bought this other version was to see if I'd be able to find a source of decent, affordable Kunlu Shang for other people out there. Now, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself by uh, claiming that I have indeed succeeded in doing so, but we'll drink this in a bit and we'll talk about it and uh, see what it's like. What has everyone been drinking today? Have you all had your uh, tea yet? Oh, Night Jade from Taiwan Sourcing. I I recall you talking about the Night Jade a few days ago, and it sounded like something that I in particular would really enjoy. So it's uh, I've put it on my list for stuff to get from Taiwan Sourcing if I ever end up ordering from there. And Adam drank some white to tea Shang this morning, and now you're drinking a black tea sample from your Yunnan Sourcing order. Uh, what kind of white to tea shang did you have? Do you remember?
Also, uh, Broto, on the note of deciding on your evening tea, uh, I might have found a source of decent, affordable, like mid 2000s Chiang Thai. And uh, not the ones we already know from J, etc. So, no, like Tian Xia Tong An, uh, no 06 Jiang Cheng but uh, some other ones from around that same age range that might hopefully be decent. Ah, from the intro set, okay. Yeah, I've somehow still never tried a white to t -shang. I'd be interested to see what they're like, but uh, I haven't really gotten around to ordering any, given that most of the stuff I've been doing has been Taobao and Tmall. See, that's exactly my mindset, bro. I would also rather explore, like, more of what's out there than... Uh, just eternally sticking with what we already know. And... Uh, interestingly, one of the ones that Source offers is actually the uh, 2005 Top of the Clouds Chiang Thai that was or maybe still is sold by Crimson Lotus. So that one I'm especially curious about. Yeah, still just really good tea. Uh, that first steep was quite light in comparison to every other one. The third and fourth ones uh, have been much more like the second one, so like quite strong. Present flavors, uh, definite bitterness but not too strong. Light sweetness, uh, minerality, herbaceous. All that good kind of stuff. I'm gonna mute myself again. I need to do yet another steep, so I'll be back in a moment. Okay, um, I think I'm probably gonna do one more steep after this one. I do think the tea has more to give. I think it could go to seven or maybe eight steeps with this method, which is uh, eight grams in about 170 milliliters and just longer steeps. However, we've got an entire other tea to drink and talk about etc and I don't want to drink like too too much liquid today so there are definitely no uh, longevity concerns with this tea it has the stamina to go uh, for enough steeps that one would be satisfied after one session But I, I don't think it would be wise of me to just drink this until it's completely finished. When there's more stuff to drink on this stream. Oh, 
Oh, Crimson Lotus actually still has some top of the clouds. Yeah, that's interesting. Because, hmm, a sample of that would be cool to compare to the top of the clouds from the uh, new source I have. Just to see if uh, their storage is actually reasonable. I think this can go for a bit longer. Let's see. Yeah, that should be fine. And then, uh, once this is done decanting, I'm gonna start another steep right away. Just so I can get the maximum amount of flavor out of this for this final steep I'm doing before moving on to the next tea. And I'm back. So, overall, about Crimson Lotus Tea, I can say that when it comes to Shang, you can't really go wrong with them. Like, uh, I bought the big sampler from 2018 and a bunch of other stuff, and I've tried lots, and generally speaking, uh, everything they offer has at least been quite pleasant. A lot of it has been actively good, and a few of the teas they offer have even been quite special. So like the uh, Slumbering Dragon, for instance, which uh, coincidentally is also Kunlu material, was one of my absolute favorite sessions of 2018, where I just like sat down, enjoyed the tea, and had the uh, Journey soundtrack running in the background. And somehow that just worked perfectly together. Another really good one is Jade Rabbit. And, um, yeah, I'd say those are probably the top two out of the ones I've tried. Um, but really everything in the sampler was quite enjoyable. So if you need a good spot for younger Shang, a good uh, western facing vendor for that, Crimson Lotus would probably be my personal top pick. And I think a lot of that 2018 stuff that's still in stock is actually quite affordable. Like, some of the 2019 productions have been a lot more expensive, like we saw with the KXQM. But uh, you can get stuff from previous years, 2018, etc., for a good price. So that's where I'd look if you're uh, not looking to spend too much at once. Funnily enough, I've never tried any of the planets either, but I really want to and I think I need to at some point. But uh, given my experience with their uh, rather shanks, I uh, would have been very surprised if the planets hadn't been good.
Because yeah, like I said, this tea right now is just really nice, really good. And I am definitely looking forward to that next steep. Pineapple candy. Oh. You, uh... You know how to catch my interest. Because that is something I am definitely interested in. <sighs> yeah, I wish. Kunlu as a whole were just more uh, accessible in the West because uh, Crimson Lotus is really the only one who offers various uh, Kunlu teas. There are a few other ones out there, like I think I've seen a Kunlu tea on uh, Yunnan Craft, there's one on uh, Terre de Ciel, which is a French poor vendor. And then there's maybe one or two others out there. So, compared to other areas, uh, its availability is really limited, and I would love to see that uh, change at some point, because it's just really good, and I've been super happy with every single Kunlu tea I've tried so far. It's just a nice area. And if you want to learn more about Kunlu, there's a really interesting video from Crimson Lotus on their YouTube channel talking about uh, like the history and other things regarding that specific tea area. There's some great uh, knowledge in there and you can see the, uh, see the tea gardens and a lot of cool stuff. I definitely recommend checking that out. Alright, final steep of the 2018 Crimson Lotus KXQM. It's kinda hot right now, not gonna lie. Overall, really good tea. It's unfortunate that it's not available at the old price anymore. Um, I'm not sure if I'd be willing to pay 40 cents a gram for it. I'd probably look towards the uh, Planet Kunlu instead, or just spend a bit extra and go for a 2018 Slumbering Dragon if that's still available. But, I mean, there's nothing really wrong with this TU. It's quite enjoyable, it's a good mix of flavors, and even if you don't enjoy sweet tea too much, or especially if you don't enjoy sweet tea too much, then 
this is probably a good one for you. Definitely also very just drinkable. So we've got that last bit of tea here. I uh, have a pot filled with leaves. You can uh, take another look at those right now. I will dump those out into my uh, broken guy one turned leaf uh, litter container. And once I've done that, I'll be back with uh, the second Kunlu Chaomu, which uh, I'm also really excited for. So I'm going to be AFK for a bit once again. I'm going to leave the music running and uh, I will see you all in a minute or two.
I'm uh, boiling the water right now, as you might be able to hear. I'm gonna wait for that to be finished and then I'll be back on voice as well. Okay, uh, the water has been boiled. I'm reheating the pot right now. Uh, while I'm doing that, let's take a look at these leaves for the new Kunlu Chaomu from 2019. Got a nice and large chunk here. So uh, the compress uh, compression on this one is fairly loose, but uh, the one on the KXQM was a touch looser, I'd say, because uh, that one tends to just kind of fall apart into individual leaves as soon as you pry it open. This one's a bit... Uh, this one stays together a bit more, but it's still quite loose, especially compared to, like, factory material. So yeah, I'm gonna put that in the pot now, and then we're gonna do a rinse, and the first steep after that. Once again, I'm using 8 grams of leaf. Same pot as before, that's uh, why I went AFK after all. I need to finish this as well before I uh, make more tea. Right, the rinse should be just about done now. I'm gonna pour it out for you all to see. So something that's instantly noticeable compared to the other one, uh, the color isn't quite as intense, I would say. Of course we didn't see the steep of the last one, so it'll make more sense to compare later on, but uh, a somewhat lighter color is a usual trend for teas that are a bit younger. I need to reboil again, so I'll be muted for a second, but I'll be right there. Okay, first steep is in the works. While that one's going, uh, we can take a quick look at the spent leaves from this KXQM. Looks quite nice overall, not a lot of like 
small bits, fairly whole leaves and stuff. Really nice overall. I really can't complain. Okay, this should be just about ready. So let's see. Yeah. So here's uh, the first steep, and here are the leaves. You can't see a lot yet, but uh, we'll be able to look at those again in a bit. First impression is good. These leaves also look fairly whole, a bit uh, greener than these uh, 2018 ones, which also makes sense, of course. Uh, welcome, Kicken and Z. I am not very experienced with herbal teas, no. I drink almost exclusively uh, one particular type of like tea tea, which is called Shang or Raw Pua. And outside of that I'm honestly not particularly knowledgeable at all. And of course one could also say that I'm not particularly knowledgeable about Shang either, but that's the one I drink, and that's the one where I can at least talk about my experiences. Ah, uh, Crohn's. Um, of course, I am not a doctor, or uh, I don't have any form of medical training either. But... Hmm. Maybe you could try uh, some some aged ripe poor. That could help. Like uh, one of the people in this chat has uh, has or used to have. I'm not sure. Uh, some like stomach and dietary tract issues for a while, and uh, drinking either aged chengs or uh, somewhat aged, ripe poor teas has been fine for him, but uh, ultimately you can't really know unless you try. That's definitely the direction I'd point you in though if you wanted to give uh, drinking tea a try. I'd also res uh, recommend joining the tea discord if you can. Maybe there are some people on there that might be able to help in some way, shape or form. We've even got some like proper doctors that know their stuff. Uh, so if you happen to catch one of those, maybe uh, they could help you. It's just discord.gg slash tea. But yeah, let's uh, give this a smell. So. The first thing I'm noticing about this is that compared to the other one, this one is like quite intensely fruity. It it really does give you that, like you get citrus, you get uh, sweet tropical fruits, that like candied pineapple note that Broto mentioned in chat earlier. I could definitely see that like being described here. <sighs> oh, that, that smells so good. This one, this one is probably a bit more up my personal alley. Ah, he's still really hot despite uh, having sat there for a bit. So that's good. Alley light on the first uh, first steep I'd say slight grain note uh, 
lighter bitterness than the previous first steep, but definitely the same direction. It's not quite as herbaceous as the other one, but there's a much more significant tropical fruit type sweetness to it. And one thing that's really nice here is that this sweetness just lingers and lingers on your tongue. And it then kind of combines with the other flavors you get in there, and I'm, Im I'm immediately noticing that this one, like, coats your mouth way more than the other one. And the aroma is, like, really, really strong. It's, uh... There's this kind of thing I do sometimes where I, like, slowly push my tongue towards my palate to, like, get a better impression of the aroma of the tea, and, uh, with this one it kind of feels like the air that's in your mouth is so thick, and I'm not really sure how to, like, properly express it, but there's a lot of aroma in there. Even when you have no tea in your mouth, it just lingers on forever and ever. Like, it's still sweet right now, and it's been probably like almost a minute since I last took a sip. Yeah, this is really aromatic. Um, it's it's kind of interesting how it's similar in a lot of ways to the previous tea in terms of which flavors are there, but then those the the composition of those flavors is quite different. Like I said, this one is a lot sweeter in comparison, and that's the one thing I found a bit lacking about the other one. So, for me personally, I think this is a flavor balance that I prefer. And the aroma on this one is just a lot more intense overall. Oh, that's that's so good. I will mute myself once again for a moment. I need to reboil, get another steep going, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this so far. And we're back. Those of you that already know me uh, probably know that I like have a really big thing for fruity aroma and flavors in my teas, and this one is just on the mark in that regard. You got that tropical sweetness from your... Uh, that tropical fruit sweetness, and then you've got that 
grapefruit pea like bitterness here as well and those two together are just wonderful In the like really late aftertaste you get the tiniest hint of like a green taste of a very young tea which I mean obviously makes sense when this was made in 2019. I'm expecting that particular flavor to go away with a bit of age but it's honestly not really unpleasant or anything. This one also has the minerality of the other one and I'm not sure if it's stronger here, or if that's just because, like, the increased amount of sweetness provides a better counterpoint to it, so it stands out more. Second steep, going in. Mm -hmm. More intense bitterness now. More intense flavor overall, much like uh, in the other one. First steep, usually a touch weaker. Especially with this one where we had that bigger chunk that needed to be a bit uh, loosened up. Mm, but, damn. This is really good, and uh, I would... I think I would buy this again, for sure, at that kind of price, like... It's... it's good. So nice and viscous too, like... It's aromatic, it's viscous, the flavors are there. There's not really anything... bad I can say about this tea right now. It's just really nice overall, and uh, I wish this were more available on the western market in one way or another because people need to try this, especially when you've had other Kunlu before, I think this one is going to be a really nice experience. my next tea buy I'm probably gonna try more teas from this vendor just to see if this one was like a lucky find or if their offerings are really good in general they do seem to offer a lot of uh, a lot of single origin teas at fairly reasonable prices so I hope that uh, some stuff from other areas that they offer will be good as well. One in particular that I'm really interested about is a 2013 Gödeng that they have. It's a bit pricier, I think like 70 to 80 euros for 200 gram. But I mean Gödeng is a really nice area. And 
if all of the offerings from that vendor are comparable in quality to this one, coupled with uh, the particular flavor profile of Gödeng that I enjoy quite a lot, it might be worth the money. Overall, I'd say this tea is maybe a touch more astringent than the Crimson Lotus one, but that may also be an age thing. Like, um, a lot of teas tend to mellow out a lot during their first year, so that particular astringent, uh, astringency might be due to it being young, and there is a chance that it won't be there anymore in, say, half a year from now. But still, like, even at this point, it's, it's really minor. Like, you notice it's there, but it's... It's not very, like, upfront or present or anything like that. And on that note, uh, I'm gonna need to reboil the water, so I'll be back in a few seconds. Okay, that steep is on the way, shouldn't take too long I hope, and I'm not sure how much longer I'm gonna go with this one, I might just like finish it completely to see how long it can go, but it's gonna depend on like how much more liquid I can reasonably drink. I'm definitely uh, starting to notice it at this point. We're already, I'd say, almost two liters uh, into the stream. And there's more to come. That steep should be ready really soon. Maybe another 10 to 20 seconds. Alright. Let's give this a try. Yeah, looks good. Looks good. squeeze out those last few drops because uh, as many people would say those are the best bits all right 
deep number three. Going in. Ah, oh, it's still so, so aromatic. Maybe, maybe there should be like an EU group by at some point where we just get stuff from this one particular vendor and sample all of it. Because I think on my e tracking spreadsheet I've got maybe like 15 or 16 different teas from them that I would be interested in trying. That, that like grapefruit peel, tropical fruit mix of flavors is just really doing it for me. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with the value so far. I'm I'm glad I got this, and uh, I've also tried some of the other stuff uh, as well from the teas I've bought. And so far, even the most like cheap and disappointing one was still solidly decent. There isn't a single one that I've been unhappy with so far, and several of them have been like, straight up good or even great. This is probably one of the great ones, so... Uh, I got a Wangzhu Shan, which is uh, in the northwest of Iwu. That one is quite possibly the best of the bunch, and I hope I can get more of that at some point, because that one was just, like, mind-blowing. Uh, the Kudzushan was really good. Not quite at the same level of, like, amazing as the Wangzhu. The Mansong I got as a free sample from that same vendor was also great. I might have to get more of that. And... Uh, that's it from that vendor. I've got another evil production from them on the way currently, which I hope will arrive before Christmas. And uh, then from this vendor, I've only tried this one. And it's another one of the great ones for sure. So nice. I'm gonna reboil the water real quick. Steep's going in. So, Broto, if you're interested in joining in that, uh, 
I think you should have a link to my spreadsheet somewhere. And you should be able to comment on that. So if you want to, feel free to comment uh, like on the ones that you would be interested in. What are we going to be on? So this one was... Number four, I think. I'm not sure, I kind of lost uh, track. That can happen sometimes when the tea is just really good and you've got stuff to talk about. Two thousand and six, Lauman Ur did not arrive yet. Uh, it was sent out. I think it left the country on the sixteenth of December, and uh, shipping from Taiwan tends to be closer to the speed of like shipping from Hong Kong. So I'm really hoping that it's gonna arrive before Christmas. But uh, customs might. Oil that plan. Let's put it that way. I hope it will, because that would be a really nice tea, I think, to uh, maybe share with my family on Christmas Eve or something. This should be just about ready, maybe a tiny bit more. Your descriptions of Overlord definitely make me think of a Christmas E type tea, and it seems pleasant enough that even like people that aren't tea hobbyists could get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Generally speaking, I do think that uh, oolong is the ideal type of tea for that kind of stuff, either oolong or uh, green teas. When it comes to things non-tea drinkers can enjoy. And since it's winter, Oolong is probably the best pick by far. Especially when you've got one like Overlord that's just straight up a uh, Christmas bakery flavor. You do raise a good point there, Soggy, but um, it's kind of hard to keep green tea uh, fresh enough for it to be really nice from uh, late March or early April until Christmas. I mean, that doesn't mean that it's not still good, but it's uh, it's not the same. <laughs> I mean, if I got uh, if I got coal and it turned out to be Overlord, I really wouldn't mind.
Uh, oh, I need to get another sleep going, so I'll be muted again for a second. That is the cover of the album that's currently playing in the background. So in this particular case, uh, the artist is called Fantasy and the album is called Vacant Places. Just a nice uh, vaporwave album, good uh, background music if you will. Yeah, I would have liked to fit in like the track title and the album title etc somewhere in my layout, but uh, with the increased chat size there's not really any space left for it, so I'm just doing the album artwork and uh, if people want to know what exactly I'm listening to then they can check out the video on YouTube which is going to have links to everything. If my 2006 Lawman Earl doesn't get here in time, I might serve this one or the Wangzi to my family for Christmas. I think they'll enjoy it. I hope at least. So, uh, Soggy, I think you've mentioned at some point that you've drank a few, uh, cheats, uh, how, teas. Do you have a favorite out of the ones you drank? Out of that uh, set, were both teas in that set uh, Laobanjang or just the black one? Because, uh, to be honest, I haven't like come across them before people talked about it on the Discord, so I'm not particularly familiar.
I'm gonna have to do a bit of research post-stream on that one then. Yeah, I'd imagine, like, when it comes to uh, smaller, poor manufacturers, the Shizu Hao stuff is a bit more well-documented, at least, compared to many others out there. Okay, I think I'm gonna do one final steep after this one. You could probably get like one or two more uh, steeps out of this, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to drink much more tea tonight. So I'm gonna reboil right away, do another strong one, like with uh, the previous tea, and then I'll be back with you all. And I'm back. Final steep is in the works. Oh, uh, you drank it over the summer and it wasn't... Yeah. It's... I've also... I tried to start taking notes while drinking tea with other people, but... Along with the conversations and everything else that's going on, I ended up finding it a bit too distracting, so I went back to just, uh... Like committing stuff to memory rather than explicitly noting it down of the YQH should song hmm that does sound really nice more woody flavors and more depth yeah White was sweeter and fruitier. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that that's always like uh, something to keep in mind that when different people prepare the tea, it can end up tasting wildly different depending on uh, how they do it and what kind of utensils they use, etc. But it does sound like a cool uh, two tea set with like uh, a decent amount of contrast between the two teas. Still sweet, still thick, a bit less aromatic than before, which, I mean, is fine. Like, the aroma was really intense on those earlier steeps, and it's still good now, it's just not as powerful anymore. It's still got that grapefruit peel bitterness, still minerality, uh, the astringency is entirely gone at this point. Which I suppose makes sense if the tea is getting a bit weaker, because 
it was quite light to begin with. And, but there's this really interesting, like, warm baking spice type note emerging right now. It's still fairly subdued, but it's interesting that new flavors are coming out now that the dominant flavors of the tea are getting a bit lighter. This is definitely good tea. I'm gonna leave this final steep going for just a bit longer. I want it to be nice and strong and thick so we can finish this stream on a high note. Uh, links to the tea, uh, teas I tried today and the music and everything are of course going to be in the YouTube VOD of the stream. If there's anything you want to take a closer look at, uh, don't forget to check that out. Yeah, at this point, there's not really a lot to say anymore about this particular tea. Uh, I hope I've been able to give you a good impression of both of these teas, what they're like. Uh, and if you're interested in trying uh, them, there is a 2019 version available of the Crimson Lotus one, and there's still some stock of this 2019 Kunlu. You are gonna have to go through an agent to get this tea, but uh, honestly it's worth the hassle. Yeah, this one is, uh, was also part of my Taobao slash T mall purchase that I did for 11.11. It's also kind of funny, this uh, particular store sells single origin poor and then also uh, like traditionally made paper from Yunnan which uh, is a bit of an unusual mix but looks like they're making it work Oh, that's a good point, yeah. I haven't uh, taken a closer look at the paper they sell, but it would be really convenient if they sold some wrappers. Because 
exactly same. I, uh, some of the wrappers on these tees are really flimsy, and I would uh, like to have some safer ones to put them in because it can get a bit annoying when you've just got tea going everywhere when you open it. Alright, time to have the last bit of this tea. Really good session overall. Really, really enjoyable tea. If you can, I recommend uh, giving it a try. Both um, this particular tea and the tea from the Kunlu area as a whole. Still nice and sweet. Still fairly thick. Just all around good stuff. <sighs> I'm definitely savoring these last few steeps. Uh, last few sips, we are on the last steep, of course. Alright. This is probably the final sip. Uh, thank you all for joining me for yet another tea stream. Uh, this was probably the final stream of the year. Maybe I'll be able to do one between Christmas and the New Year, but it's unlikely. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this one as much as I did, and if I'm not doing another one, I hope you'll all have a wonderful Christmas and a great new year, and uh, I'll be back in maybe a month or so. Thank you for joining, have a nice day, evening, night, wherever you may be. And uh, we'll be seeing each other again at some point in the future. Goodbye.